the session is interesting. It's about disruption and innovation. So to set the tone, I'll give some examples. They say no example is better than precept. But before that, I really congratulate O Herald Group to take up this project that has been discussed for quite some time. And today we have this session here. There are three parallel sessions, so obviously the target audience will be divided. But nevertheless, the concepts and the speakers are very great. And Goa needed such an initiative. Uh, and that too from, the, from a media perspective or media group. To set the tone, disruption and innovation, two of the commonest terms, they are used, overused, and abused. They are almost like the word love. Everywhere they are used, every youth has the word love. How much of it is use or abuse, you know. Similarly are these words. But I'll give some examples, because they say that examples are better than precept. And post the examples, I'll request the three panelists who have a wealth of experience, particularly in our nation's context. Uh, this round, I'll give some examples out of India, which have originated out of India. They are in India now. And I would expect them to add perspectives uh, beyond examples, the concepts, the perspectives, what is disruption, how actually disruption happens, what is, is innovation, which innovations are disruptive and positive. And when can a disruption be negative as well? I, all that to them, but some examples. We all know about smartphones. Today it's a taken, it's a given thing. But the way they have disrupted traditional phones and brought in entertainment and e-commerce is uh, something of our times. A major, and, and all money transactions, today we don't have to carry cash anymore. So that's a positive disruption that has happened. FedEx, the concept of express. Earlier, even now, they ask for you shipping details. They are not actually shipped. They might be coming through the truck or can be airlifted. But the, the word is shipping details because that was the concept earlier. A good tra travels from the producer uh, to the consumer through ships. But FedEx brought in this express delivery concept, which was a very good innovation, disruptive innovation, Google. Anything you search, Google it. Now, Google has almost taken there, it was not the only search engine, it is still not the only search engine. But it has taken the entire domain of search. So Google it. Not even search it on the Google, it's Google it. Huh? So you are searching a place. So uh, last week I was in Egypt, and I was using the Google map for identifying places to go. Today, and that would have been very tough without a guide. Now it's no more. So Google, with respect to search engine or Google map. Netflix, it started as a DVD service. There was Blockbuster, the big company, the giant company. And uh, DVDs, are, they were more into hiring DVD, if you know, DVD rentals. So these, uh, this group came as a DVD service provider, quickly went into content producing, became the world's largest OTT at this point of time, Netflix. So similarly, uh, music. Music downloads replaced the compact disc. And music downloads completely changed. Now we don't go for... CDs anymore, as we know. And again, earlier, the music was, when you play the system, everyone listens to it. Then Walkman comes, that's another big disruption. The Walkman comes, so music is personalized, individualized, only you can listen. At one point, a point of time, GE and Ford were those who mass produced automobiles. So automobiles at the time of Beetle and others were different. But when GE and Ford came, and many others in fact, mass-produced automobiles for even the middle class. So a very top class luxury became a comfort thing for the middle class. Now, almost a necessity even for the middle class. But all the brands were competing on who gives better mileage. Koon kitna kam petrol kharcha karta hai? Mileage. Kitna deti hai that ad, ad you must remember on automobiles. Then comes a disruptive force. Wo bolte hai ki petrol chahi hai nahi. I don't need petrol to run my car. That's the real innovation, disruptive, Tesla. Tesla, Elon Musk comes and disrupts the automobile market in a very big way and it's still going on. Uh, and it's just entering Indian market anyway. Walmart, so the idea was that you have a problem of getting certain products and services. Prices are high, availability or accessibility is low. So Walmart comes with a chain and the chain retail is revolutionized forever through the prices, low prices, and claim of 
a chain for accessibility. So that's one, visa, fintech disruption through visa, visa to transaction, money transfer and all. Very big, tough, you know, sort of thing. So contactless payments, mobile wallets, digital transactions, all brought in through the visa. Today, today there are many more. We know the times of Google Pay and uh, the Paytm and all that. As, to, as of today, Facebook changed the way we look at each other. Amazon, one-stop shop to buy anything online. I mean, I just need this and I don't want to go to any shop. And I just need a variety of choices on that. Amazon brings it. And that's why the founder becomes one of the top two uh, richest persons of the world. Apple, the touch screen experience and the way smartphone engagement is brought in through Apple, Apple uh, products, and the way the concept of prestige and brand is associated with that. No other smartphone could do that. Uber doesn't own a car, but has a car everywhere, whichever country you are there. So convenient travel through app using uh, local cars. Dropbox, the way to transfer files was a very tough thing. Today, cloud storage and sharing of files has become very easy. Spotify, music streaming, first time, music streaming and music on demand. On all these, we have three gentlemen here who would be speaking. And um, I call upon first the gentleman who is revolutionizing one of the fourth industrial revolution emerging technology, that's a blockchain. So he heads the India Blockchain Alliance. A very charming gentleman, Raj Kapoor for you. I'm going to pick up on all the examples that you gave. Now, he gave a lot of great examples. So I'm going to pick on each one of them and I'm telling you how they are being disrupted by new technologies. Now, that is something which we should know. These are great technologies, been there for a long time, proved themselves. Let's start with Google. What did Google do yesterday? It banned lots of Indian apps. How many of you know that? It's a monopoly. Google is now actually controlling our ecosystem, right? If Google says, no, you don't align, out you go. I have been an advocate of saying, why don't we have our own app ecosystem? And that's the first thing we are doing right now. In fact, in Goa, I've got three boys. Prashant, that's for you. Three boys. I'm training them on my terrace, by the way, in Goa, in Panjim, on creating a prototype for India's first App marketplace for Indian apps. Let's say that's innovation. Very good. Second, he said Netflix. Everybody sees Netflix, Prime Video, Hotstar, Z, plenty of them, right? Again, there's a young startup from India. I'm working with them. I mentor them. They are from Bangalore, I think. Yeah, they were Bangalore, Hyderabad. Now, you don't have to subscribe to each one of them. Soon, it's going to come through. You pick what you like and you pay a fraction of the cost of your subscription. Basically, you pick and choose what you want to see and pay for what you really use without having to subscribe for all this. All that on a single platform through a single app. That's innovation. That's breaking the barriers out here. And that's happening in India. Whichever example I'm going to give today is, going to, is happening right now in India. I'm not going out of India right now, excepting for one or two, which is really great. Then we talked about music. We talked about Spotify, etc. We are in Goa. Goans love music. How many of you love music for that matter? Forget Goans. Everybody loves music. Now, if I can tell you one thing, guys, with music, I can create code. Would you believe me? Somebody will say, what the hell is this guy saying? It's a name like that. I'm working with a bunch of fantastic enthusiasts, international and Indian, with AI, using AI and blockchain, blockchain for capturing data and securing it, AI for making my models, on creating code through music. So when you play songs through your emotions and the way it's done, that's how we create a certain amount of code. And that's not, a, and, and we're doing this not only for creating code, for actually creating applications and products and platforms. Isn't that a fun way to do some good stuff? Right? And uh, there's another one which I'd like to say before I go maybe move on to the next person. Uh, we also know that you talked about Uber and you talked about other things as well. The same thing, just like Netflix, etc. We are slicing and dicing, so you don't have to go into different apps for booking your own cab. There's a company in Bangalore, we are working very closely with them. You can now book your cab through any, which, whichever gives you the best deal. Like something like Trivago has come up with. The only thing is this is run on smart contracts and it's on blockchain. Why blockchain? People say, why the hell you use blockchain? Yeah, simple. Blockchain is that one technology that you can trust 100% because once Things are on the blockchain, it's 100% immutable. Second, 
it is transparent, traceable. I can go on and on about that, but then that's not this session is not about blockchain, it's about disruptive technologies creating disruptive products. I've just given you three, four of them, and maybe we'll share some more later on. But this is just the bottom of the pyramid, guys. And one Indian guy recently, uh, that's, he's being awarded uh, you know, something in America right now, you want a prize. Uh, he's my mentor, I mean, I mean, he's my mentee. We created a very nice uh, thing called Report to Earn using AI and blockchain. In Report to Earn, as it's the largest citizen project in the world today, as a citizen, I go out, I see accidents, I see people you know, getting hurt or people harassing somebody, people throwing stones at dogs or a wounded dog, something like that, anything. I can now just click a picture report it and it's the entire algorithms are made in such a way it goes to the authorities concerned and they have accountability now nobody can say mujhe to bataya nahi mujhe to pata nahi main to yahan ward mein tha hi nahi it goes directly it's being done in nebraska right now he's in america i told him come to india we will do that here and you'll be happy to know that last week shri shri ravi shankar and his people her community have said we will adopt this app for becoming more responsible citizens. So now that is something we call innovation, and that's business disruption. Great. Thank you. Very good examples, largely in Indian context, of so big clap. Because it, it contributes to the Atman Nirvarta, it contributes to the Swayam Purnata. One of the slogans of India as a whole and this program is how do you look at self-sufficiency, self-dependence. So these examples actually are, uh, what should I say, the frontier of new India where you actually create such applications. Most of the examples are aggregator apps, basically. They are aggregating multiple apps in one platform. Like uh, uh, Daily Hunt does for news. They are aggregating news from all sources on one platform, Daily Hunt. And, and uh, InShorts does. So you should actually uh, look into this. Those who uh, love noting or following trends and news and all that, you don't have to really read multiple uh, uh, you know, sources. A, a daily hunt or a in shorts gives in brief such short stories, a lot of things from multiple media organizations. So that's another innovation that's very pure Indian innovations. Um, we'll now go to, now from someone who has been uh, leading an association, a body, India Blockchain Alliance, we move to someone who is a founder, a founder, an entrepreneur, who himself with his team is developing technologies and new businesses. We go to Mr. Ravi Devula Palli, founder and CEO at Instinct Technologies. Good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> that was an amazing, you know, high energy uh, inputs from uh, Raj. I'll probably take you on a similar journey, but then with different intentions and um, intent. <clears throat> so the talk about innovation and disruption was amazing. Uh, professor, I think you covered the entire subject in such a short time and uh, kind of educated us all on where it comes from and with so many examples which are very close to our daily life. From my experience, what I have seen is that innovation is the term given to some change that happens in your life when it is something nice to talk about and disruption is something we talk about when we are disturbed. How many of you agree with this? We call it innovation when we are happy about it, and we call it disruption when we say this is something is a little uncomfortable, right? So the idea that Clayton Christensen started with was not to make you uncomfortable. It's only saying that you have to move out of your, out of your comfort zone to be able to reach new heights and like Raj always points out, you know, cross the barriers and look at some different kind of way of living, way of doing things. Let me share with you my opinion on disruption innovation. I felt that disruption slash innovation has always been there. It's been there from the time we have been documenting history, right? People have crossed barriers. People have defined new tools, new ways of living, new ways of doing things, and things have changed, and that's why we have so many history books, lessons, subjects, interesting stuff. What changed now is three things. The tools have changed, which is primarily 
governed by technologies, uh, primarily again the semiconductor and information technologies. The second thing which changed is related to that which is the pace of change, the speed of change, which all of us are trying to grapple with. The discomfort you feel, the dilemma you feel when you are saying, I love Facebook, I know there are, you know, all these you know, bad things about that, but I love Facebook. The dilemma that you face is because of the pace of change. And, you know, the, with AI coming in, AI again, you know, AI is something that I feel we have been living, the words AI, have, we have been living forever with it, right? Childhood, bachpan mein toh AI was part of AIR for me, All India Radio, always there, right? During education, AI was about AICT, you know, <laughs> governing my life. And as my age goes up and I'm becoming more and more health conscious, I read about obviously AIMS, the All India Institute of Medical Science. So this AI thing never left us, it was always there. Just that this is such a high pace of things that we are not able to understand and grapple with that it creates a little bit of a disruption and a discomfort. Now, I would want to put out three uh, uh, topics here, which comes to the most important thing that is different now. We do have uh, tools which are different, we do have the pace of change, but most importantly are the values that we are living with. So that's where the human comes up, right? Artificial intelligence and human intelligence. The values that I look at which are changing and which have, we have to really, really look at adopting are, the first thing is what in English we call empathy, right? When we call about empathy in, in Hindi or Sanskrit or whatever, we, I call it samvedana. Vedana is somebody's pain, somebody's disturbance and samvedana is I am with you on that, I feel the pain. So what happens with empathy, samvedana, I can go to western concepts also, I am qualified to talk about design thinking and all but this is our country, these are our people, I'm sure all of you understand this language. So when I'm feeling the pain of the other pe person, that, from that comes my creativity to solve the pain, right? So most important topic that needs to be taught, that needs to be discussed, that needs to be encouraged is samvedana, empathy, the feeling of pain. So even in the morning, some of the conversations that happened here, all the disturbing uh, 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 thoughts that come out in a forum that is all gung-ho is because somebody is saying, please think about Goans, right? Please think about, in, in our case, I'm from Hyderabad, please think about the local Telangana people. Please think about Indians is what we are saying when Western companies come over. So, I mean, we can go ahead dividing, dividing, but I'm saying, the concept of feeling somebody else's pain and creativity trying to solve that pain is the entire essence of innovation slash disruption for the positive output, right? So that's one thing. Then uh, I go ahead and say, so how does this, so what happens, I feel your pain, okay, I feel your pain, but I'm sitting here, right? Where does that go? That doesn't go anywhere. So the second concept that we need to uh, inculcate into the youth and to ourselves is volunteerism. You know, in, in Punjab they may call it kar seva, right? Nobody is asking you to do it, this is my thing, I have to do it, I will use my hands to change things, right? Volunteerism combined with uh, empathy is what will change our world, right? India, if it has to move forward, the third pillar which comes after these two, when I feel the empathy, uh, the uh, pain of others and I volunteer to solve it, that's when the third thing comes up which is self-dependence, which is one of the words used in the tagline here, Atmanirbhar. Atmanirbhar don't come just by saying Atmanirbhar, I have to feel the pain of my countrymen, my local people, I have to go and do something about it and then we become self-dependent. Self-dependent doesn't exclude involving others, self-dependence doesn't exclude exporting our services, our innovation to the entire world. It actually develops everything. So these three concepts just wanted to add to the innovation disruption uh, topic. In terms of experience itself, agriculture, one of the uh, obviously leading professions if you may call it, 
rural innovation. I've been part of some of the initiatives there. Uh, very small one, we, we were talking about um, um, uh, a community here which helps us get one of, the, one of our favorite drinks, um, go up uh, the trees in such a dangerous environment, get the coconuts, do the things for us. Uh, in Telangana, we have uh, pole climbers who have lost lives because they climb the poles, fall down, break their uh, you know, uh, bones, and they do not have insurance. A lot of accidents happen there. A small innovation. I'm sure a lot of people have seen that innovation on YouTube or WhatsApp now. But in the initial days, when somebody came up with a S-shaped, uh, ultra S actually shaped shoe, a rod which attaches to his chappal and helps him climb the pole very easily. That man put up a WhatsApp message. Again, technology used to um, encourage innovation. And that was taken up by one of our organizations. And now it's the same innovation after some uh, versions is used in Australia. Of course, that man is a rich man, but he still goes around training pole climbers to use that simple innovation to save lives, to ensure that people have a good, uh, you know, safe environment to work with. We have, um, if you go to disruption, uh, I'll just take a couple of more minutes. Disruption. In the future, I don't know how many of people have, you, uh, have thought of how AI will affect. I'm, I'm trying to uh, move away from things which are normally discussed. I may cause disruption here, but you know, this is a forum of free uh, uh, discussion. So uh, if you take, uh, if I challenge the world of um, uh, judiciary, right? We all are a little uncomfortable even talking about it, but uncomfortable about saying that judiciary, uh, you know, judgment, uh, justice is not done to many, many people because of a lot of reasons. One is administrative delays and all that. If I say one company is working on something very revolutionary, uh, their, their premise is that judges do not have enough input to be able to make the right judgments. And there is no way to cross-check it, it is human judgment. So, how many cases we know that the person has not committed the crime but had to go to jail or even worse. And there is no way to cross-check it. Now, there is a company which is trying to build completely AI. Imagine the application where judges sit on these completely virtual cases where it is humans talking, it's actually virtual avatars, humans talking who have been fed, saying that you have committed this crime this way, and you are being incriminated for this, both of them fight the case. And the judge has to decide without knowing that these are not humans. And it is like almost a test run for judges to see how capable they are to be able to judge these cases. It's not just about knowing the law, it's about the human side also being tested. Very revolutionary, I don't know if it will see the uh, uh, light of the day right away, but things are happening. One last input. Um, we can think about changing the entire world, but as youngsters, we have a lot of problems just around us. No problem is small. Prashant sir can vouch for this. Pick a very small problem and think about solving that problem in a very innovative way. Trust me, the problem and the solution that you are giving both grow together with you as a person and create revolutions. So just stay local, stay very close to where you are, identify problems and move forward with solving them without leaving the problem or trying to give multiple solutions in spite of multiple failures. Thank you, quite well illustrated. And I really like the definition given to innovative disruption. So you will see a pain of someone, your own self or someone else. You have some awareness now for that. Then you volunteer to sort it out. And through the process, create a product or a service which makes you or makes the other person self-dependent or atmanirvar. That's the definition that he has given. Beautiful way of looking at it and humanizing it, bringing it to the grassroots, making it rooted, the concept of disruption and innovation. We'll go to the next person and this gentleman has an experience of working with the government, working with the United Nations, and is now uh, leading a think tank. So we have Mr. Naman Srivastav, 
CEO of Global Governance Initiative, earlier with the Government of India and the United Nations. We have him share his perspectives on disruption and innovation. Mr. Naman Srivastava. For the major part of my life in diplomacy, so today I will not at all be diplomatic. I'll be brutally honest, and my inspiration here is Sujay, who I briefly spoke with, where he stands for truth, honesty, and that is extremely needed in today's day and age. And it's very difficult to be honest all the time. I think the major component that we are covering in today's session is also about future of business. Disrupting it, not, dis not disrupting it, that's a different story. But future of business is something that I want to hit upon. Now for me, future of business has to be inclusive. Something that was beautifully encapsulated in the initial inaugural addresses. Future of business has to be inclusive also in spirit which in terms means that here at the panel discussion, we should perhaps have representation of women. Future of business should not be just about having an all-male representation. Future of business should not be just about technology. It has to also be about empathy, right? Otherwise, what happens? Today, we spoke very briefly about Meta and Instagram and whatnot. If you think about it, if you think logically about it, all of these billion-dollar companies, what are they selling? If you think about Instagram, they've made billions of fortunes by selling envy. Mark Andreessen recently tweeted a post that went absolutely viral. And essentially, it correlated the advancement and you know, coming up of the mobile phones and the case of depression, suicides, especially in the US. We can make similar analogy here in the case of India as well. Instagram selling envy. Twitter, everyone is angry, selling wrath, anger. Netflix was spoken briefly, it's selling sloth, one of the deadly sins. That's why I'm saying again and again, and things to be reiterated, that disruption will never be about technology. Humans have to be at the center of it. It has to be about empathy, and that will happen only and only if there is inclusivity from across the parties, across the scenarios. What happens is if you have trillion dollar companies, you can also set narratives. The way it happens with, let's say, Apple in this case. An organization that spoke immensely about right to privacy. But if you dig deeper, now they're building a marketing company out of it. Look at the results of the last quarter and you will have the data at hand. Just look at the facts. The third party tracking stopped only for the, th for the third party vendors, not for the the Apple iPhones. If you were to scroll through the apps, you would realize how much of that is sponsored apps. So that's why inclusivity has to be at the, hand, at the center of it. And disruption has to be about empathy and humanity. Humans have to be at the center of it. Very good. Very new perspective added that technology can grow. Yes. Technologies can grow. But if the technologies do not have human being at the center of it, it cannot be a truly long-term disruption, cannot be inclusive. So inclusive, again, is not about human being in general. Inclusive is about various communities, various segments, financial segments, classes, and communities all together. So great, that's another perspective added to the discussion. I have some few examples, Indian examples, and uh, of uh, disruptive innovation, and how uh, human beings or inclusive growth is also happening there, after which we can take questions from the audience. So uh, recently, Ola has come out with um, you know, another uh, venture of it, EV venture, which is named Ola Electric. 10,000 e-rickshaws are being launched. And 10th, Ola we know is, uh, uh, is a transport uh, service, we know the way app-based transport service. But now to come out with e-rickshaws of a different pattern and model, and bring it to the common people to support them, their, uh, their livelihood is a great initiative. Paytm's wealth management, we know about Paytm money. Geo, the regular calling charges free through the Volte technology, and now they are co controlling one third of the telecom industry. How the free uh, ch calling charges being free became a game changer in the industry. B2B supply chain, Ninza cart, they, they acquire fruits and vegetables from the farmers bring it to the retailers, and 
make the farmers earn much more money than what they would have done it through the local mandi. So uh, Ninja Card, that's, they are not exactly a typical middleman, but it's more a technology based. Very interesting one example I found, two examples let me say. I don't know whether you've heard this name, Samosa King in Bangalore. So Samosa King, the guys, their husband and wife, they left their jobs, uh, high paying IT jobs, to start, now seven, now more are coming, a chain of samosa suppliers. And here, they observed what are the problems in samosa business and addressed them. No change in flavor, so they made multiple flavor, vegetarian, non-vegetarian, both types of samosas, and multiple flavors. Then crispy, it goes off after you cook, crispy goes off. So they brought in a technology by which for six hours the samosas are crisp. And then they also brought in not baked but fried samosas. So a lot of new innovations they've done. And they're a successful, uh, you'll be astonished, their latest uh, valuation in the valuation market, the latest is $14 million. $14 million is 35 crores plus, I suppose. So that is the valuation that they've gone into. So the point is that you can actually innovate. In, um, one big example, unicorn, food unicorn, in my hometown, Calcutta, started from there, all over the country now, wow momo. A momo is a very, very favorite delicacy uh, in eastern part and northeastern part of India. They made it a, the way dosa is across the country. Now momo has gone across the country uh, thanks to wow momo. It was there earlier in some cases, but thanks to wow momo, the whole chain has come and it has become a unicorn. So the point is, and 72 types of momo I could never think of. They are researching and developing every time. So there are many examples in this country, uh, some examples already given by Raj, which are upcoming ones, and these also, and many more, I'm sure, that uh, disruptions are coming. Now, before uh, uh, we take questions, I can hardly, I think, 15, 20 minutes are there. Let's have, first, let's check if there are questions at this point of time, or else I will ask them questions myself, myself. but uh, it would be good if anyone from the audience would just pick up your hand. Hindi mein bolo, Angreji mein bolo, kuch bhi bolo. It's okay. Uh, it's not that we have to only speak in English. And uh, please ask any question related to future of business, innovation, and disruption. These are the three keywords in these times of digital communication. Keyword is the, the usual jargon. <coughs> these are the three keywords. So what comes to your mind that you would like to know from this panel? And you won't get these uh, three gentlemen so easily and one go under one roof. So any questions, please? Uh, so I'm Yagnesh Karwarkar. Actually, I'm a student of this college only uh, in computer engineering third year. So uh, you spoke about uh, disruption being the center of businesses. And uh, businesses such as like Instagram running on Envy and Twitter uh, such as on Anger. So is it wrong to use these concepts to run your own business and make money? Or is it just based on perspective, like how you use it? It's not like their fault, right? Like if anyone else uses it, uh, every, everything in this world has a black and white. So it depends on the person. So Fine. is it wrong, like what they're doing? Or, Fine. Yeah. Question more of values, but anyway. First of all, everything what you talk about, the Instas, the Facebooks, anything, all these are tools. Remember that. They're tools. What can you do with the tool? You have a hammer, what can you do? You can either hammer something and break it, or you can make something out of it. That's what a tool does. You have a brick, you either make a wall, or you build a bridge. These are tools. Think of them only as tools and make your own evaluation. This is my two cents advice to you regarding this. All of them, everything can be a disruption or a destruction. Think of the hammer again. It, become dis it became disruptive when it came, and it can become destructive when you don't want it. So keep that in mind always. And uh, anybody else a perspective, please go ahead. That's true for nuclear power, as we know. Yeah. You can bomb a nation, and you can, create, uh, you can cure, a, uh, cure a person or get, get electricity, power out of that. So it's completely on the perspective that you use for. Yes, second question, uh, someone one, else? Yes. Uh, one point there, if you don't mind, sir. Um, one point please that give the mic are, to him in the meantime he answers. Yagnesh, if you are the one who is making the hammer, please give the instruction on use. <laughs> That's important. It, it again depends on the values of the user to understand and right? use that. The user can use it in any way, but it's your responsibility Civility, to yes. define. Responsibility. How yes. it's supposed to be used. Yeah, our second point. My name is Srivatsa. I'm a doctor by profession. 
and I've been a disruptor since 1980s. I'm finding it very interesting that you're discussing about it in 20th, 20th century, basically. Um, I, I've developed lots of medical innovations which were all published in medical journals. Doctors from all over the world said that I had a um, unique kind of talent. And unfortunately, medical industry is like a mafia. If you come out with a disruptor which is going to help millions, the companies don't allow you to move forward. I am stuck at this moment. I, in fact, I gave it up. I said, who the hell cares? I don't. I'm already 69 years old. But the technologies which I have developed is going to be of immense use because the bacteria have developed resistance. It is impossible for me to resuscitate a patient without giving him infections. And that is going to be a, a huge problem in the coming decade. In what way do you think your organization claiming to support uh, disruptors is going to move forward and encourage people like me, not me alone, but the youngsters, to come out with disruptors and support them. There is no point we telling, oh yeah, you have to come out with a disruptor after the disruptor has become a samosa king. No, you have to hold their hand and move forward. You have all sorts of things here, but I hope in the next decade, you will help people who definitely come out with disruptors, listen to them and offer the help. There is no point saying just apply here, apply there. You have to step forward because they're not going to be bold enough. Because I am a veteran, I have worked in medical innovations all over the world. I've developed, helped companies develop medical innovations. I don't care whether I need it. It's not the money which drives me. It is a passion and Thank the you. encouragement which Th helps me. Thank so you. So I hope you encourage that. Yeah, and you have already made the point. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Uh, okay. uh, before I ask the panelists, let me uh, note that all these startup councils or cells, government or private that are being created, incubation cell, accelerator cell, are all intended to help people who want to disrupt and innovate and develop business, whether as a startup or as an existing business. They're basically doing that. It's important to get in touch with them to be, for example, Prashanji is exactly doing that. The government of Goa's cell on startup. They're exactly doing the same thing. I will request everyone very briefly what can be the ecosystem created to support disruptive, innovative businesses of the youngsters. What do you think on that? Please, sir. I'll take it. I'll take your question and I'll make a generic answer for it so that it applies to everybody, not just the healthcare or medical industry. I'll tell you a project again from India. What we are doing is like you have some patents, you have an idea which is recorded, which you probably upload it somewhere. And I'll tell you very honestly, a lot of patents can be really unpatentized, so to speak. What we've done is we created a blockchain-based solution for patents, copyrights, IPs, etc. Not only does it protect the patents globally, but, and this is the, this is the kicker, how do, you how do you help the next generation? These patents can now be fractionalized and sold at a cost 100x than what you actually think it can. And I'm doing it myself, so I know that. I have 67 patents in blockchain, which probably cost me a couple of million dollars. Now the valuation of that is $208 million. But that's how we help people, make them realize what their knowledge can actually do for them. They don't have the guidance, they don't have the, we help you do that. So that's what okay. we do. That's what I'm happy to do for you also. So a blockchain-based solution to create a positive ecosystem for those who want to be in disruption and innovation as a youngster start business? My opinion is, uh, see, first and foremost, I also invest in private markets. And whenever you're investing in private markets, the eventual goal is to maximize on your profits. I know this is something controversial to say, but that's the hard reality. You don't invest just for the impact. You have to ensure, you have to tell your LPs, your GPs, you know, what are my IRRs? What are my returns? That is how investing is done. If, uh, if I cannot uh, convince my LPs that you know, this is going to be my IRR, 
I will not get uh, the next round of funding. So at the end of the day, um, maximizing on profits will happen. But I also concur with what Raj said, that uh, at the end of the day, you have to think of double returns. One could be on the impact side, the other could be on the side of the profits. And I think impact investing is a thriving space and is gaining a lot of prominence in India, in South Asia. And uh, I'm so glad that uh, at least via Global Governance Initiative, we have been closely working with various impact investors and ensuring that youngsters get the opportunity to be part of that ecosystem. The goal is to create an entire ecosystem around it. One person, two person, they can't do many things. It has to be an entire ecosystem. And that's what we have been doing. And hopefully, you know, through our venture, through the works that Raj is doing or Ravi is doing, uh, a lot of good could be, could be achieved, achieved for the benefit of India. Great. Any example would you like to, or any suggestion would you yes. like to have? Uh, first of all, I, to I totally understand uh, where you come from, sir. Um, I have uh, spoken to several people on that front. It is a challenge. It is something which we cannot push away and say it doesn't exist. It exists. It is a serious issue. Uh, two examples I would uh, like to bring out here is, uh, again, a grassroots innovator who invented something uh, for solving his own problem of using two bore wells at the same time. I don't want to go into the details there. But as an innovator, the purpose of the innovator is to ensure that his or her innovation is utilized by the world. When you said money is not the thing for me, what you mean is that whatever I have created, that knowledge should be utilized for humanity, right? So this person basically wrote three or four pages detailing all the technology. Uh, he learned the chips on his own, he did everything on his own. He wrote everything for and he got the uh, names and numbers and email IDs of whoever he could get and he actually made copies on his own money, about 450 copies of that and posted it to all of these people saying, if it is useful in, these, in your villages, please use it. Okay? And we, and the, in our Im own immature way, we were saying, how could you do that? There is so much money to make there and with that money you can create a technology which can improve, there will be a team to support it and then you can create more innovations and all that. He said, I am 65, I am done. I have done this, no, let the world use it. Second perspective, Elon Musk. He has hundreds of patents. What he has done, I am sure some of you are aware of this, is that he owns the patents, but he has opened up the use of those patents to anybody in the space technology. What is his purpose? If any human can ensure that this knowledge is utilized to take the science forward and help us establish ourselves in Mars, other Earth planets and whatever, that purpose is served for me as an innovator. So I'm not talking about a grassroots poor guy, you know, this. There are people on both sides who understand what an innovator wants and that is utilization of the innovation for the world's benefit, right? So one small thing that we have done in Telangana government again very practical, very uh, difficult to implement is that every innovation that is discovered, of course they are documented and all, there is a mandate given to the government department to give opportunity for the startups innovation to be utilized in the projects and not ask for all the mandatory requirements of two years of business, this much of revenue, this many people and all that stuff. That is eliminated and allowed for the innovation to participate in the normal bidding system. Very small step, I'm not saying that it has massive effect on the ecosystem, but it does and things change over time. So those are my three inputs. Sir. Great. So we had a lot of examples from technology driven innovations to uh, the concept of Samavedan or empathy leading to innovation to the concept of inclusive innovation to uh, innovators or disruptors being allowed to do business, uh, skipping certain mandatory aspects, and to the emerging Indian aggregator innovations as well. So there were a lot of examples that have been brought in. What is important is to finally grasp the essence of innovation, disruption, and apply in the problem or the issue that we are tackling individually. So at the individual level, rather than wondering at what the world does, well, it's good to know that, 
but unless the knowledge leads us to action the value of the knowledge isn't there padho lekin sath sath karo so let's hope that we bring in small innovations the way we study the way we teach the way we mentor the way we act in small innovations because the habit of bringing in small innovations would lead some day to the bigger things of life thank you with this we bring this session to an end thank you very much